So uh, often my titles come from lyrics to songs, and they're sort of playing in the background of the studio. And I'm sure that this came from a lyric, but I can't remember what song it is at all. So if anybody knows, let me know. But I think it's one of the things with Lightbox works. They don't look like anything unless there's light behind them. And so there's this, this staring into a light uh, idea. And when you close your eyes, you still get it burned inside your retina. And I think that it's... Uh, these paintings are essentially signage, and when you're out into the world and you see signage, it's so bright that you often find that same thing. It's like you're staring at this light in the middle of the night, and then you close your eyes and you've got that, that red red number in your eyelid. So, so yeah, it, it's like that. I mean, at that time there was cameras, and there were like it just wasn't as common for someone to be able to go out and take a picture of something and be able to show that image to somebody else. So the role of a landscape painter was that to go out into nature and paint the things they see, and use uh, you know their own studio practices and their own gestures and their own hands and describe it in their own way. But uh, in essence, it was to document the places around them, and I think that. We have a very different perspective of how we look at landscape painting uh, today. Most people see places through social media. I mean, we're always uh, we're always on the phone looking at the perfect waterfall that somebody else has taken, and the biggest comment is, "How do I get there?" But it almost doesn't matter whether you're there, or there or not, because you just you've seen the best conceivable image of that thing on your phone. So I think that with that in mind. Traveling to places makes less is less important. It's more about scouring the, the internet for the best images of a place that you want to go to, and then going and then recording that yourself, which seems so popular. Um, so often we already know what a place looks like before we go, which is interesting as well. Um, it's just it's it's so different. I, I've spent a lot of time in parks and with people with the iPads, you know hanging over falls and like trying to take a picture with an iPad. Um, and that's so common now, and has been common for the past five or ten years. So I don't think it, none of this stuff was, was what was happening um, 100 years ago. So how can we not look at it a different way? I also think that one of the reasons this, this show is a light box show is because we're so influenced by signage, and we're so influenced by the slick surface of, of backlit, all of these back with iPads, all those kind of tablet things. So it's more familiar to see it in sort of a print format. Um, within my own practice, my painting practice, I use CMYK, which is a printing color um, formula rather than RGB, red, RG, red, green, blue, or red, yellow, blue, which would be like the painter's traditional thing. So I try to use the printing method, which is more cyan, which is like a light, light blue, and magenta, which has a really distinct pop to it. But this is so much more familiar to how the process looks uh, from a printed perspective. So I think that I think that you just every painter, every artist uh, works from what they see in the world. And if the way we see images, and the way that the Group of Seven saw images, and Tom Thompson saw images at that time, was very different than what now all those guys worked as commercial uh, advertising tracks, so they would they would draw the idea of what the North might be for products as well as for the paintings. So there was some of that was in there, but I think that all the technologies have changed from then to now. And I think this just shows gives like a little bit of a nod to the technologies that happen. show will be interesting because it's backlit work on backlit glass that we'll be looking at through a backlit tablet on glass already, so it's like a you know, window within a window. Um, I'd love for people to come up and see it, but uh, I think that it would be fascinating to see how people experience it you know, through the duration of this show.